everybody. So, in our series of lectures on basic electronics learning by doing, we will move on to the next lecture. Before we do that, let us just recapitulate what we discussed in our previous lecture. In our previous lecture, we discussed about the basic characteristics of an amplifier like the gain the input impedance, the output impedance, the bandwidth, etc. We also saw a very simple model of the transistor, namely the RE model of the transistor and we applied that model for a simple common emitter amplifier and discussed the various parameters like the gain, the input impedance, the output impedance, etc we did an analysis. We also took the, an illustrative example of an actual circuit with the various resistors in place and we also looked at how to evaluate the different parameters of the given amplifier, common emitter amplifier corresponding to the gain, the input output impedance and things like that, current gain, voltage gain, all those things. Now, let us move on to another model which is more popular that is the hybrid model. So, in general any circuit can be looked at as for example, in the simplest case as a two port network as you can see on the screen you have something like a black box, we call this as a black box because we are not interested in the details of the circuit inside, but we know that this has got several components, maybe transistors and things like that, resistors and we have an input port and an output port. You have two terminals here corresponding to the input port and you have two other terminals at the output port. So, this is a simple two port network and we now, we can apply a voltage here and measure the current and what the output voltage is. We can measure here the output current, output voltage, etcetera. So, by performing some measurements on this two port network, we can get a lot of information about the type of circuit that we have inside this black box. The, the, the box is called black because we are not we are ignorant of what it is inside. We are not aware right now of what it is inside. It is in a general situation. So, it can have any kind of a circuit. So, there will be always you know this if it is an amplifier for example, there is a very specific relationship between the input parameters and the output parameters. In this case, the voltages and the currents at the input and the voltages and current at the output. Therefore, now, out of these four variables that we have, V i, I i I corresponding to the input, I o and V o corresponding to the output, we can always choose two of them as independent variable and the two other as the dependent variable. So, we can have enough combination of these things. For example, I can make the two voltages as dependent variable and I can write them in terms of the independent variables I i and I o 
then you know v i can be some constant factor of i i plus some other constant of i o and where these constants will have dimensions of resistance because you know v i is nothing but resistance into current. We are using the currents as the independent variable and therefore, we must have the two constants having magnitude of resistance. Then this is now looked at as a network of resistors and therefore, this is this way of handling the circuit or the model is called the R parameter model. You can also relate between uh, the other way that is I 1, I, I, I and I O can be written in terms of V i and V o, then it will become admittance, the 1 by resistance, which will be the magnitude of the constants that we make use of. So, we can analyze it in that way also. But the most popular way of looking at this for several reasons is the one that I have written it at the bottom. As you can see, the V i or in this case it is actually V i, we can also call it as V 1 and V 2. The V i is equal to H 1 1 i i plus H 1 2 V o, where H 1 1 and H 1 2 are constants of suitable dimensions. In this case, you can see the dimensions of H 1 1 and H 1 2 are different. How do you know what are the dimensions of H 1 1 and H 1 2? It is a very simple matter to understand that this is voltage here that is equal to something multiplied by current. That means, you know what it has to be, but from Ohm's law, this has to be a resistive element. The constant should be having dimensions of resistance and therefore, H 1 1 is a resistance. If you look at H 1 2, it relates your voltage V 1 to your voltage V naught. Therefore, the dimensions of the H 1 2 should be a constant, it is dimensionless, unitless. So, V 1 is some constant multiplied by V o. Therefore, you find in the same equation, you have a constant which is having dimensions of resistance, another constant which is unitless. Similarly, if you look at the other dependent variable I output, that again can be written in terms of I i and V o, but I call that H 2 1 I i plus H 2 2 V o, where H 2 1 will have dimensions of this is relating current to current, therefore, this should be again be a constant. H 2 1 should be a dimensionless constant, whereas H 2 2 relates current to voltage and therefore, this should be a conductance or 1 by resistance. So, you can see of the four constants that I have used in these two equations to relate the two dependent variables with the two independent variables of this four port network, H 1 1 has got dimensions of resistance, H 2 2 has got dimensions of red admittance or conductance, H 1 2 and H 2 1 are dimensionless quantities. Therefore, you find you have combined different constants in these and therefore, it is a hybrid equivalent model of any two port network. Our interest is on the model of an amplifier making use of transistors. So, let us go further and see how do we look at these equations. Now, how do we get H 1 1? How do we evaluate H 1 1? How do we evaluate H 1 1? When I make V output 0, this quantity will be lost from the equation. This will no more be there. And the, at that condition, if I divide V i by i i, whatever I get is actually corresponding to H 1 1. So, that is what is written in the next page. H 1 1 is nothing but V i divided by I i at V naught equal to 0. When the output is 0, what do you mean by output 0? The output should be shorted, uh, then only the voltage will become 0. The voltage across a 0 resistance is 0. Therefore, when I short the resistance, when I short the output terminals with a good conducting wire, the output voltage is 0. At that time, if I measure what is my V i, the voltage that I impress and what is the corresponding current. If I measure using a current meter, the ratio of that will give me the first constant H 1 1. H 1 1 is V i by I i when V 0 is 0 and because it is a relationship between voltage and current, you know it is a resistance in ohms. H 1 1 will be in ohms. 
Similarly, H12 that is a second constant H12 I want to evaluate. Well, how do I do that? You can see when II is 0, when II is 0, this term will vanish and H12 will become VI by VO. That is what is shown in the second equation. H12 is equal to VI, the voltage impressed at the input divided by the voltage at the output at II equal to 0. What do you mean by II equal to 0? II will become 0 only with the resistance, input res is infinity. That means you are open circuiting the inputs. So, when you open circuit the input, the current becomes 0, there is no current there and H12 will be equal to Vi by V out. So, that this because it relates to voltages, the dimensions will be there, it would not have any dimensions or unitless. Similarly, from the second equation, we can obtain H22. H22 is given by I naught by V naught, I output by V output when I I is 0 in the same way. Similarly, if you want H21, H21 will be obtained as a ratio of I output by I input when V output is 0 or the output is shorted. So, that is what is written in the other two equation here. H21 is I O by I I when V 0, V output is equal to 0. That means, the output is shorted at that time, the ratio of the current. So, you can see in effect, this is nothing but a current gain. The current gain corresponding the output and input, this is actually the voltage gain V I by V O corresponding to the uh, network. And the H22 I naught by V naught when I I is 0, that means when you open circuit the input, the ratio of the output current to the input voltage is what is called H22. So, it has got dimensions of 1 by resistance or conductance, that is why it is written in Siemens, conductance is measured in Siemens and therefore, the, you, are, you can also see it is nothing but 1 by V1 by I2, that means 1 by resistance is conductance 1 by in this case this relates to the output and therefore this will be the 1 by output resistance now we can try to model our given transistor using this hybrid parameters you know our transistor has got three terminals and therefore we want for a four port network four terminals we have only three terminals, therefore, you know we have already discussed that we can have one of the terminal as a common terminal between the input and the output. Correspondingly, you get three different configurations, common base or common emitter or common collector. So, you can have transistors configured in three different ways as I mentioned now and now let us look at for example, in general, if I take the transistor this box corresponds to the input side. You can see the input side, the V i and the I i are there and this box will contain a resistance which I now designate as H 1 1 corresponding to the equation that I wrote for the hybrid parameters and H 1 2 V naught which is actually a current gain. It is not, it is actually current gain, but it is in the reverse ratio. It usually current gain is given by output voltage by input voltage. In this case, you find H12 is obtained by V i by V naught when I i is 0. So, therefore, you get a reverse gain factor or it is a reverse ratio between the input and the output H12 is. So, if I multiply by the, that ratio by the output voltage, I will get the voltage which is available at the input due to the presence of the output alone and that is why this voltage source comes here H 1 2 V naught. So, this corresponds to the input side corresponds to this equation and you have one more on the other side which is corresponding to the output side of the transistor in this case you where you find you have 1 by H 2 2 is a resistive component, but it is actually conductance that is why it is written as 1 by H 2 2. H 2 2 is conductance 1 by H 2 2 is resistance and H 2 1 is a current gain factor. So, if I multiply by the input current, you get H221 into II as a current source here, which I have here and therefore, this actually links the input to the output, whereas the H12 V naught component links the output 
to the input side. So, because it is a solid state device, whatever that happens at the input can have an effect on the output, whatever happens at the output can have an effect on the input. That is why these two things are coming in the model. So, this is how the transistor input side and the output side can be modeled. This is a general equation. We have not taken anything as common here. We just assume uh, that this as is on the input side, this on the output side and therefore, we have written the equivalent circuit for the two sides independently. So, this is actually the combination of the two and this has got slight, slightly extra meaning here. For example, the H11 is now replaced in the model of the transistor as HI which corresponds to the input resistance and HR which corresponds to the reverse ratio, voltage ratio. HR, H12 we know is a reverse voltage ratio uh, that is normally designated in the transistor equivalent circuit as HR V0 and similarly HF corresponding to the forward ratio of the current HR, HF I, I is the source at the output due to the input current I, I and 1 by HO, this is actually 1 by HO, HO is the conductance at the output, 1 by HO is the output resistance when I look from the output side. So, this is the normal way to designate a transistor model except that you will add an additional subscript here along with the I, R, F and O depending upon what is the configuration that you use. For example, if you are using a common emitter transistor model, then the emitter is common to the input and the output and therefore, you have an IB here which is your II in this case, your IC is actually the IO that we talked about and you have a VBE, the voltage between the base emitter which is the input voltage here and which is the VCE at the output which is the output voltage. And so, the corresponding equivalent model you can see can be shown on the right side. The input resistance now, the H11 is now called HIE, HI corresponds to the input resistance of the H parameter and the E comes because it is a common emitter configuration. So, for all common emitter configurations, all the H parameters will come with an additional subscript E which shows that it is corresponding to the common emitter configuration. So, this is the base terminal, this is the collector terminal, this is the emitter terminal. You can see this HIE is a input resistance corresponding to the hybrid uh, model and this HOE VCE, this, this is like this, are, this should be HRE, HRE VCE is the reverse ratio of the voltage that is a source that is coming here and this is HFE IB which is the current gain times the IB that is a output current source that comes because of the IB at the input. So, and 1 by HOE as I already mentioned is the resistive component at the output. Now, what will be the magnitude of all these parameters in a very typical situation corresponding to a given transistor. So, if I, if I take a normal transistor like a BC107 or whatever, a general purpose transistor, you would find the H11 parameter especially the HIE parameter. Uh, will be for the common emitter configuration will be 3.5 kilo ohm approximately it is well few kilo ohms 1 or 2 kilo ohms or 3 kilo ohms. The H12 which is the reverse ratio of the voltage you would find it is 1.3 into 10 power of minus 4 typically that means this is a very very small number. So, this small number multiplied by the output voltage which will be the additional voltage coming at the input due to the output voltage alone and therefore, you can see this is going to be a very, very small component, small contribution in the circuit. H21 is actually HFE in the case of the common emitter amplifier and therefore, HFE the forward ratio of the current or the current gain and this is typically around 120 or so up to, up to about 200 or so for a normal transistor. And the last one which is 1, one, by, uh, one by HOE is the resistance output resistance or HOE is the conductance and that will be approximately 8.5 micro Siemens, this is micro Siemens and if I calculate the 1 by HOT, it is around 120 kilo ohms or 
0.1 mega ohms approximately. So, this will be a very large number several hundreds of kilo, kilo ohms at the output. So, you find this is a very large value at the output resistance, this is a very small value of the voltage reflected at the input. Therefore, you would find in most of the simple discussions we can if we are not we are just uh, interested in getting a reasonable number close to the actual value you can comfortably neglect the role played by these two when you want to do a very quick calculation of the various parameters of an amplifier. And therefore, what is more important is the HIE which is a few kilo ohms at the input side and the HFE the 120 ohms. Now, you can also relate the hybrid parameters with reference to the RE model that we discussed in the previous lecture and you would find that HIE that I refer to here will be related to the RE, it will be actually beta RE that we have seen in the uh, earlier discussion. That is what is shown here. I have shown the two models side by side for comparison. You would find in the simplest model of the RE parameter, you would find the input resistance will be related as beta RE, where beta is a current gain of the common emitter configuration. Uh, in this case, it is HFE. So, this is the resistance and that is shown as HIE here. So, these two are the same. Similarly, HFE into IB, the current gain into IB is what I we get in the hybrid parameter here. In a simplified, we have neglected the very small quantities corresponding to the HRE parameter and the HOE. And therefore, you find here the beta IB is the only current component that is coming here due to the current gain HFE or in this case the beta, the beta is equal to HFE, you can see that. In the same way, if you go to the common base configuration, which is also used to some time for some specific reasons for specific applications, you would find the HIB there will be equal to alpha RE and the HFB IB that we get the current source will be corresponding to alpha times I uh, E, the, this is actually the E, so alpha times I E. So, this is for the common base configuration a comparison, this is for the common emitter configuration a comparison between the hybrid parameter in the simplified uh, model and the corresponding RE model that we already discussed. So, if you become familiar with this, so we can actually in any transistor amplifier, we can replace the transistor with this type of a model circuit. So, you find it becomes very simple, whatever on the input side we have connected, we have to take into account the presence of HIE and for the output side, we have to uh, take note of the current source that is available at the uh, out, uh, output. So, with this we can relate the rest of the resistors, capacitors connected here as well as here and we can try to obtain the various parameters corresponding to the transistor amplifier in different configurations. Okay. So, this again is to just to bring home the idea that HIE in the case of a common emitter amplifier is nothing but beta RE that we have already discussed and HFE is the beta AC the current gain factor. Similarly, for a common base HIB is RE and HFB is approximately uh, minus alpha and the alpha you know is very close. I see the current in the collector is almost equal to the I E the current in the emitter and therefore, this is very close to 1 that is what is stressed here. Now, we can also evaluate the various H parameters graphically. One advantage of the H parameter as you can see is that most all of them are measurable you can see HIE is nothing but the input resistance of the transistor, HRE is a reverse voltage ratio which can be obtained from the simple gain that you get from the transistor and HFE is the current gain which also can be measured and HOE is nothing but 1 by output resistance which also can be measured. So, all the four parameters that we normally come across can be very easily evaluated in this case and that is one of the advantages of using H parameters. Now, we try to look at the same thing here whether we can get it from the characteristics that we discussed, the transistor characteristics. So, 
What is HIE? HIE is nothing but the change in the base emitter voltage divided by the change in the IB. So, corresponding to the, uh, the AC. Whenever I use a small case letters, it corresponds to the AC parameter. When I use capital letters here, that will correspond to the DC parameter. So, because it is an AC parameter, you can relate it to the change in the base emitter voltage corresponding to the change in the base current when the VCE is maintained constant. We discussed about in the DC case that this should be equal to 0, here we say it can be a constant. Maintaining constant, find out what is delta VBE by delta IB that will give me the HIE. Similarly, HRE is delta VBE by delta VC, it is a ratio of the voltages from the input side to the output side and therefore, this is called a reverse ratio that is why that R comes, it is a reverse ratio of the voltage when IB is equal to constant and HFE is delta IC by delta IB, it is a current gain when VCE is equal to constant, HOE is the reverse resistance and that means it is a reciprocal resistance that means the change in current by change in voltage and when IB is equal to constant. So, this is very useful for us in evaluating the values of H parameter in from the characteristics, but we should always remember one important concept in that and that is the H parameter will have to be different at different places where I see the slopes are different at different points in the characteristics and therefore, the values of the H parameters can be different. Usually, if you look at the data manual of a transistor from the manufacturer side, you would find he will always say under what voltage or operating conditions the H parameters are given. So, he will give a set of H parameters, but he will also specify the voltage and current at that condition. And therefore, one has to be careful not to take the H parameters at face value, but we should always look at at what biasing condition or the at what point on the uh, Q point or the operating point around which these H parameters are obtained and only if you use the same operating point, these H parameters can be used in your calculations. Otherwise, one has to evaluate corresponding to the operating point, you choose around the operating point all these H parameters. How do we evaluate? That is what I am now trying to show with the graph that we have in front of us, which is basically an output characteristics. The VCE on the x axis and the IC, the current along the current collector along the y axis and you can see these are the family of graphs that we get for the different currents, 60 base currents, different base currents, IB is equal to 60 micro ampere, 50 micro amperes, etcetera. And you can see the point is, uh, the, the bottom one is long, the top one is short, you know why. It is because here there is another graph which is actually an hyperbola coming which corresponds to the power rating of the transistor and therefore, there is no point in extending these lines beyond because after some time there will be a breakdown and therefore, this is the typical characteristics output characteristics of a transistor and just they have shown a Q point operating point at which the transistor may be biased and therefore, I would like to evaluate the different H parameters around this operating point. For that, what do I do? I just take one example here HFE. So, HFE is nothing but change in the collector current divided by the change in the base current when the collector emitter voltage is maintained constant. You know this is corresponding to VCE, the voltage between the collector and the emitter. So, if I choose a constant point for example, here the operating point is at 8.4 volts, it is shown in the bracket here. So, I choose the Q point at which the VCE is 8.4, I keep this constant and I start moving along the constant voltage graph which is the vertical line, the ordinate here. Now, if I go from one graph corresponding to the one base current to another graph corresponding to another base current, you would find the change in the IC collector current is given on the Y vertical axis the current you can see the difference is delta IC between this point and this point. And what is the change delta IB? I have already calculated delta IC that is this difference in the graph 
and delta i b is the difference in the two graphs that I have. This is for 20 microamperes, this is for 10 microamperes and the difference in collector base current is delta i b is 10 microamperes. So, the denominator is 10 microampere and the numerator is approximately about 1 milliampere. This is about 1.5 to 2.5, this will be about 1 milliampere. So, 1 milliampere divided by 10 microampere, that will be the HIE value, the million micro, there it will go. So, it is 1 by 10 into 10 power 3, it will be around 1000 ohms approximately. Is that right? This is 10 microamperes, this will be 1 milliampere. So, 1 by 10 kilo, it is about 100 ohms, it looks like. So, in, the, in this case, it is about 100. So, it depends on the point you choose. So, if you calculate here, it may be different. If you calculate some other point, it may be different. So, one has to be careful about the point to choose. It is always good to measure the various parameters around the Q point. That is what I want to stress. Now, let us move on to the next value, which is HOE. So, the two parameters can be calculated from the VCE IC graph. The second parameter is HOE which is nothing but the change in the collector current corresponding to a change in the collector emitter voltage with constant I B. So, the change in collector current is how do you get that? For example, I can go with reference to 8.4, I can go somewhere close to the operating point 2 points here for example, 5 and 10. From here, I can find out what is the collector current here and with reference to this, I can calculate what is the collector current here. This change is what I call delta I here and this difference here is the delta V C E. So, it is actually you can see it is nothing but the uh, slope of this line that I have here, but we want to do it at the collector uh, at the Q point and therefore, you have to choose two voltages here and the two corresponding current and thereby we can calculate what is delta I C by delta V C. And you have to go along the same I B that is most important, this is the I B. So, that is I hope I will explain once more, it may not be clear. You can see I choose a I B here, this I B is in between 10 and 20, so it is written as plus 15 microampere and it is a constant. So, this is a constant I B line and I, I want to find out the change in I C. So, I take two points above and below whatever is the two points, this is one point here, this is another point, this change is the delta I C and the corresponding change here is the delta V C E. So, if I now put delta I C by delta V C E with I B constant at 15 microampere, this gives me the H O E and 1 by H O E is the output resistance we know it. So, in the from the graph we can always take two neighboring points and find out what is the corresponding value here. Let us move on to the next value which is HIE the input resistance and HIE is change in base emitter voltage to the collector base current and that can be obtained from the other graph which is corresponding to the input characteristics. You have a VB here, you have a IB here for the common emitter amplifier. Uh, it's a transistor common emitter configuration. So, you find around 0.7 also it starts increasing, this is the current starts increasing. So, now what we want is the change in the base emitter voltage corresponding to a change in the base current. So, I choose two small points and draw ordinates here and here where it cuts and from that I will draw the lines on the uh, base IB graph you would find this is corresponding to 10 and 20. So, the difference is about 10 and the corresponding difference is about 0.015. So, I divide the delta V B E by this value by the delta I B that I get here at constant V C E. This one graph is for a constant V C E. There is another graph. This graph is for constant V C E with V C E 20 volts. This current is constant with V C E is equal to 0 volts. So, you have different graphs and you should go only along the graph which has got constant V C. For example, this is the graph we have used and these two ordinates meet at this point and this point that is why these two lines are drawn. So, the difference here is 10 milliamperes, it is in milliam microamperes, 10 microamperes and this voltage is about 0.015 volt and if you divide one by the other, you will get the H I E value from the graph. Similarly, 
for the H R E parameter delta V B by delta V C E, you go from uh, it has to be at constant I B, constant I. Therefore, you draw a horizontal line corresponding to a constant I B, which is 15 microamps. In the previous case, we maintained the same 15 microamperes at constant I B you go from one graph to another there are three graphs here different corresponding to three different values of vce and you find out corresponding vbe here and here find the difference and the difference is 0.008 so that 0.008 is the numerator value delta vce is the difference between 0 and 20 volts that is about 20 volts so 0.008 by 20 volts that is the value for corresponding to ib equal to 15 microamperes which is constant and this gives me the HRE parameter. So, you can see by using the two input characteristics and the output characteristics, we can obtain all the four H parameters HIE, HRE, HFE and HOE easily. It, they can also be measured as I already mentioned to you by an actual experiment. I have not discussed that part, but let us quickly make use of these H parameters in a very typical case of an amplifier and see how we can evaluate the various important values of the current gain, voltage gain, input resistance, output resistance which are of importance to us immediately. So, now I have given you here the simple uh, amplifier, one single stage, one transistor, common emitter amplifier which is very familiar to you by now we have discussed several times earlier also. So, you have a coupling capacitor here, you have a voltage source, signal source here which is characterized by a voltage source in series with R s, the series resistance corresponding to the generator and internal resistance of the generator and this is the coupling capacitor C 1 which blocks the DC and R 1 R 2 is a voltage divider bias that you have for the transistor amplifier, R c is a load resistor here and you put a coupling capacitor and connect it to a load, external load here R l if you want and here is emitter bias resistor R e which is only for biasing and you have a capacitor which takes care during A c that this resistance will have no role to play because the capacitor for the normal operating frequencies will be a shart across the resistor and therefore, I can almost take this equivalent to this point for AC equivalent circuit. And we also know in the case of a common emitter amplifier, the, there is a 180 degrees phase shift between the input and the output. We have discussed number of times earlier also and therefore, if the signal is sinusoidal at the input with a small amplitude, the output will be a large amplitude because there is amplification and you can also see the phase is just opposite of the input. That means, it is 180 degrees when it is increasing here the output is decreasing and when it is decreasing it is actually increasing and then decreasing. So, you can see there is a 180 degree phase difference between the out input and the output in the case of common emitter amplifier. All these things are already known to you. Now, let us try to see how to write the AC equivalent circuit of this you know the rules of the game. The rules of the game is that the DC supply should be short. That means, you have to take a wire and connect it to heat to get the AC equivalent, which is equivalent to saying that this point is the same as this point as far as AC signals are concerned and therefore, this R 1 can come over here, this R c can come in parallel here and that is what we have done in the next slide. So, you have still the input signal generator with the V s and the R s you have this Z i which is actually the R 1 and R 2 resistors coming in parallel at the input side and then you have this transistor within the dotted line box, the box with the dotted line. This is the H i e of the transistor, this is the H r e V output and this is the H f e I b corresponding to the input, this is the 1, H, 1 by H o e the output resistance and therefore, you find this that E, E, B, 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 C corresponds to the emitter base and the collector terminals of the transistor. So, the box which is in dotted line shown here is corresponding to the transistor. That is why I have replaced the transistor by the equivalent circuit using the hybrid parameters here. And these are the R 1, R 2 resistors that you have 
used for biasing the voltage divider bias on the output you have the R C again coming in parallel to this because of the A C equivalent and this R L is the external load resistor that we have connected. So, this is the A C equivalent circuit of the whole amplifier showing including the signal inputs the signal generated the input and the load connected at the external load connected the output. Therefore, this becomes very simple you can see it is nothing but a network of sources and resistors on the input side and again a network of resistors and sources at the output. So, and we can easily evaluate the various things using this. Okay. If, if I do not have in my common emitter amplifier, if I do not have this capacitor that means, for the equivalent AC equivalent circuit also this resistor will come into the circuit that is what is shown here. This is an unbypassed emitter resistor is included in the circuit that means, we have removed the capacitor here and therefore, this R E will have to come into the circuit and that is shown here. This will be the equivalent circuit of an unbypassed emitter resistor common emitter amplifier and the corresponding equivalent circuit here is the equivalent circuit of the transistor. There is no change it is exactly similar to what we already have seen and these are the R 1, R 2, this is the R C collector resistance and this is the external load R L. So, this will be the circuit I should use when I have a unbypassed emitter resistor. So, the relationship and the input gain output input resistance output resistance gain etcetera will also include contributions due to this additional resistor R E that is what we should remember. So, let us now go ahead and start looking at these things how to analyze for example, input impedance how to obtain the input impedance. Now, because H R E V O we have already said that H R variable para hybrid parameter is a very very small quantity therefore, we can almost neglect the contribution due to this and that becomes rather simple the circuit becomes simpler to analyze. Similarly, the H O E 1 by H O E is a large value compared to any of these resistors R C or R L these will be few kilo ohms this will be hundreds of kilo ohms and therefore, when I bring the parallel values of different resistors the large resistor will have very little contribution the contribution will mostly be due to smaller resistance and therefore, we can afford to neglect the contribution from 1, H, 1 by H O E most of the times and therefore, I have uh, later on uh, you can see that I can neglect the H R E contribution here and the 1 by H O E contribution here then it becomes much simpler to analyze and so if what I want to ultimately obtain is the input impedance. So, what is the input impedance at the transistor is at B you can see it is nothing but H I E because this also I have now neglected therefore, there is only one resistor which is coming at the input side between the base and the emitter and therefore, the Z B at the base of the transistor is just H I E. So, this H I E now is going to come in parallel with the other two resistors and therefore, the input resistance of the amplifier if I take the input resistance of the amplifier then the Z i will be equal to R 1 parallel R 2 where R 1 R 2 are the voltage divider bias resistors in parallel with the Z b here and this Z b now is H i e. So, it is very simple it is nothing but the input resistance Z i is R 1 parallel R 2 parallel H i e. So, if you know the H i e if you know R 1 and R 2 you can find the parallel value of all these three and that will give you the input impedance Im immediately you can evaluate the input impedance. If you use an unbypassed emitter resistance R e then the calculation becomes slightly more complicated, but it is rather simple V i is I e into H i e plus I e into R e because you have now H i e and R e both are coming in the circuit in series as you can see quickly the H -E, this is neglected this is H i e it comes in series with R e therefore, the I b will be flowing through both right and therefore, I the I e into H i e I e into R e ignoring H r e V naught and the what is I e is nothing but I b plus I c we know that and therefore, I e H i e plus R e into I b plus I c now you rearrange you can see it is I e into H i e plus R e into 1 plus H f e because I c is nothing but H f e into I b 
current gain H F E. And therefore, if you now divide V i by I B or in this case, you would find it to be I H I E plus R E into 1 plus H of E. So, in the previous case, when the emitter resistance was bypassed, the input resistance was just H I E of the transistor. Now, because you have R E also, you would find it will have an additional term which is R E into 1 plus H F E. It is not a small value because you see H F E is a large value, it is about 100 or so for a given typical transistor and therefore, if it is about 1 k or 2 k, it will be multiplied by 100 or so and therefore, this value will become very large compared to H I E which is usually of the order of 1 or 2 kilo ohms and therefore, this will have more important role to play than H I E. If R E is bypassed, this entire term will be vanishing and therefore, you will be only worried about the H I E which comes at the input stage. Similarly, if we want to measure the output resistance, the output voltage you have again Z output is equal to 1 by H O E because this is a large value we neglect that and otherwise what we should do the output resistance is 1 by H O E parallel R C because R C is very small few kilo ohms H O E is 1 by H O E is very large hundreds of kilo ohms therefore, the effective resistance will almost be equivalent to R C. Now, if we come to the voltage gain, the voltage gain is given by the equation A V voltage gain of the amplifier is the V output divided by the V input. What is the V output? V output is the collector current which passes through that parallel value of R C and R L. So, this is the output voltage I C parallel R C parallel R L multiplied by I C and what is the input resistance? I B multiplied by H I E. Here I, I have now taken the bypassed R E case and therefore, it is only the H I E that I have to worry and this is the value and therefore, what is A V? V O by V I, V O is this I C multiplied by R C parallel R L and V I which is I B into H I E. So, if you calculate this, you find it is nothing but minus H F E into R C parallel R L by H A E. So, if R L is not connected only up to the C 2, the emitter, the coupling capacitor if you take H F E into R C by H I E. This H I E I already told you is nothing but beta R E small r e and the beta is nothing but H F E. So, H F E into small r e this H F E H F E will go. So, A V the voltage gain in the normal transistor is nothing but R C by small r e. R C that is what we also got in the previous discussion if you recollect, but in general the expression is minus H F E R C parallel R L when you also include the external resistor and divided by H I E which is a input resistance parameter. So, there is a minus sign here, why do you get a minus sign? The minus sign is here because we know the input output are related by 180 degrees phase difference and that is taken care of by this negative sign. So, if you take consider the case of the unbypassed emitter resistance, then it will be slightly different. You will have V I B H I E plus R E plus that 1 plus H F E into R E will also come in and therefore, you will have output I C into R C parallel R L that there is no change in that, but with reference to input I B into H I E plus R E into 1 plus H F E. So, this is an additional term which comes we have already seen and therefore, the gain a V the voltage gain will be minus H F E R C parallel R L divided by H A E plus 1 plus H F E times R E. So, you find this is slightly modified by the additional term that you have in the denominator that comes because of the R E which is unbypassed right. So, this if, if you consider the with reference to this uh, R E into 1 plus H F E which is a large value H A E can be neglected in that case you would find it will almost be minus R C parallel R L divided by R E. This H F E and H F E can go because compared to 1 H F E is very large. So, these two will go you will be left with R C parallel R L divided by R E this also is a small value and therefore, minus R C by R L divided uh, R C parallel R L divided by R E will be the quick estimate of the voltage gain in a unbypassed R E resistor included in the circuit. So, we can get the voltage gain. Let us move on to get the current gain. 
what is the current gain? HFE is IC by IB and you should remember this IB is actually related to IS which is a source current coming from the generator and the relationship because there is a divider. The two parallel resistors are coming the RS and the RB. RB is nothing but parallel value of R1 and R2. So, the IB will also be given by IS RB divided by RB plus ZB. This is coming from the current divider equation and therefore, now we can consider with that the current gain IC by IS will be HFE RB by RB plus ZB. Similarly, at the output IL the load current will be divided by the IRC and RL. So, it will be IC RC divided by RC plus RL using the current divider equation and therefore, the overall current gain is IL the load current divided by IS the source the driving current IS and that will be given by the big expression here which is combination of these two HFE into RB into RC divided by RC plus RL due to the input side and RB plus EZB due to the output side. We can also go further and measure uh, obtain the power gain. What is the power gain of the transistor? The power gain of the transistor is given by the output power divided by the input power. The output power is output voltage multiplied by the output current divided by the input voltage and the input current. In this case, the input current is IB, the output current is IC. Therefore, VO multiplied by IC divided by VI multiplied by IB. I can now group them as VO by VI multiplied by IC by IB. And what is VO by VI? It is nothing but voltage gain. What is IC by IB? It is nothing but the current gain of the transistor HFE and therefore, the power gain is voltage gain multiplied by HFE, the voltage, the current gain of the transistor. So, this above equation is corresponding to the transistor power gain. If we want the overall power gain of the circuit, the amplifier, then in place of the HI, HFE, you should use the current gain of the amplifier. Instead of ICIB, you will have the IL divided by IS, which is nothing but AI, the current gain. So, power gain is nothing but the voltage gain multiplied by the current gain. So, if you have an unbypassed RE including circuit, the voltage A V will be reduced, you know that. The voltage A V will be reduced when you use an R E and therefore, correspondingly the power gain will also be reduced. So, what is that that we have done so far? If you look at it, we considered about the H parameter, how the transistor can be modeled using an H parameter. You found that there are four different parameters that come into the circuit corresponding to HIE, HRE, HFE and HOE when we consider the common emitter amplifier. So, we obtain the equivalent circuit of the transistor in terms of these four parameters and then by looking at the numbers the HRE and the HOE contribute very little to the circuit because HRE is a very small value, HOE is a large value and 1 by HOE is a very large value of resistance and therefore, they can be neglected effectively in the circuit. So, we simplify the model, we obtain the equivalent AC equivalent circuit of the common emitter amplifier and we obtain the voltage gain, the current gain, the input resistance, the output resistance and finally, the power gain. We also looked at two different distinct cases where the emitter resistance RE is bypassed with a capacitor, which becomes uh, 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 the smaller resistance at the operating frequencies, normal audio frequencies, and therefore RE will be neglected from the circuit. In the other case, we did not use a bypass capacitor, therefore, RE makes a significant contribution in the circuit. At that time, you found the voltage gain becomes less compared to the other case and therefore, correspondingly the, the power gain also becomes less. So, now what we going to see next? We would perhaps in the next lecture, 
we would like to take an example with definite values of the different resistors, take a typical amplifier circuit with numbers and then evaluate the various things as we have discussed now, the voltage gain, the current gain, the input resistance, the output resistance and all these things and then we would like to go on to a next model which is a common collector amplifier which is also called an emitter follower. You know the common collector amplifier or the emitter amplifier, emitter follower has got a voltage gain of almost equal to 1, it is almost less than 1, very close to 1. Still it is very useful circuit when you come across impedance matching situations, when you want match the input output impedances for maximum power transfer, we will make use of common emitter amplifier, which is common uh, collector amplifier, which is nothing but emitter follower. So in the next lecture, we will take an example numerical example of an actual amplifier, common emitter amplifier and we will perform the various calculations and obtain all the parameters of the amplifier and then we will go on to look at a common collector amplifier or emitter follower and obtain the input output resistance and gain and things like that and you would see at that time the input resistance is very large for the common collector amplifier or the emitter follower and the output resistance is very small and therefore this becomes very useful circuit in impedance matching applications. So with this let me uh, wind up the present lecture. So we will discuss the rest of the things in the next lecture. Thank you.